So, with the introduction of Create 0.5 and the new steam boilers and steam engine power, they've kind of quickly surpassed the old furnace engine and flywheel setups that we used to use as our prime power source long ago. I mean, rest in peace to the hundreds of kelp farms we made after that one episode that Tango made, where he uh, used dry kelp to power his factory. I, I definitely made one of those, not gonna lie. <laughs> Uh, however, the new steam boilers can be a little tricky if it's your first time tackling them, uh, knowing how they work and everything, so I've kind of put together a small starter setup you can easily build for your first kind of create projects. Of course, your first power setup is going to be something simple like a windmill or a water wheel, but this system is ideally used for your first kind of projects which need a little more oomph in terms of the stress units. Like, you know, maybe you're building something like a uh, an iron farm by washing gravel or whatever how that works. <laughs> or a fast workshop for all your machines, you know? Before I get started on the tutorial of kind of how to set this up, I kind of wanted to define the parameters of a starter build here. So, obviously some resources in the create mod require more progression than others, so to make this a starter build, I have not used any of the brass materials or any blaze burners, which means you won't be required to travel to the nether to get any of the things for this if you don't feel up to the challenge for it. I will be covering more advanced boiler setups that do use these materials, uh, like this fully automated one using lava, cauldrons, and dripstone in the future. So don't you know? Don't forget to subscribe for that, as I will be covering kind of like a breadth of different power generation options for this mod. So now we're all cleared up on all of that. It's time to get started on the tutorial. So. The main blocks I'm going to use for now is I'm going to be using some bricks, which you can easily get early game by trading with mason villagers. Uh, some layered granite from the create mod, which you can actually get by just putting um, regular granite into a stone cutter and you have access to all these different types. Uh, I'm going to be using the layered one just to start with. So to start things off, we're going to go a layered granite in the corner and then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's ten bricks. And then another granite. And then we're going to come to the side here. Five more. Granite. We're going to punch the sheep. Three. Granite. Three. Granite. And then another six along here. With another corner. And then we just fill in this last back wall here. And this is the layout for the building that I made before. And of course, like I said, we're going to have some space for some windows in here. So we're going to punch out these three on the front and replace those with our strip spruce and then the same spot on the back wall here and then over on the front here we're going to do another one just one down in the ground like that and that's where our door is going to go so once we've got our outline the next step i'm going to do is i'm going to mark out where i want the fluid tanks to go now this is actually kind of a weird system in that we're using a steam boiler to power the rest of the steam boilers so on the outer wall here we're going to have a water wheel and this will that will power this small steam boiler here. This is just a two by two, little small guy. And then on the back wall, this is what's going to be making our power. We're going to have eight fluid tanks on this back wall. That is nine. I cannot count. <laughs> That's eight. However, I'm not actually going to finalize the placement of these just yet because what I want to do is I want to do the stuff that goes underneath the fluid tanks here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a sort of like an outline of stone brick here like this and that's just going to go around all of the boilers and allow us to see kind of underneath them a little bit for the water pumps and the campfires that we're going to be using to power the boilers so to start that off we need to dig down this little two by two in the corner and just fill that up with some some water there it's important to note when you're using a pump from create they need to have an infinite water source to pull from because occasionally they will actually consume this water block below them or that they're pulling from and um, they'll need to replenish otherwise it will stop pumping the water infinitely. So with our pump on this block we want to put a cog directly next to it and then on a diagonal we're going to have a large cog here and what this is going to do is this is going to take the output of the water wheel and when you do a smaller cog attached to a big cog this cog will actually increase in speed which will mean this pump will then be spinning fast enough to pump enough water into the boiler anyway so from here we're going to take a vertical gearbox a shaft and a regular gearbox so now this output will be out the side and this is where our water wheels are going to go you're going to need two of these uh to run this you probably could run it off one maybe i haven't tested it with one but i always just go for two for for good measure 
And of course, you can't forget, you got to put your two campfires in here. And we just pop our tank back on the top, and that's uh, good to go. All right, so to get your water wheel working, I'm going to be using some of these metal girders from the Create mod. They're pretty easy to make. Um, they're just some andesite alloy and some iron sheets. So obviously, you're going to need your press and uh, maybe a mixer to set these up. But these machines are super easy to make and uh, won't really cost you that much. So we're going to start around here in line with the thing. And then a gap of two. And we're just going to hold shift and fill in these gaps. And then in the middle here, we're just going to do some of these polished deep slate slabs. And I'm actually going to replace these to place the water blocks in. Uh, because obviously you will waterlog these if you try and do it without a solid block. Um, and it is important to note with the water wheels, they actually um, work better the more flowing water you have on them. So this water is actually flowing across to the left, down this side, and back underneath. So, um, ideally, you want to leave these two blocks under the wheel uh, free um, air blocks so that it can flow back. And you just get a little bit more power out of this water wheel. And, of course, out the front here, now you can, you can really do what you want here. Like, you know, you could turn this into a little pond of some kind if I just expand this little bit of land out here. Something like this, you know, a little bit of a... Something like this, you know, a little bit of wheat, some reeds, some lily pads... Yeah, you can make this look real nice, honestly, if you if you get it right. But the decoration is really up to you. You can you can decorate this however you want. I'm just showing you how to make it functional. Although one little nub of decoration is you can actually put shafts through these girders, and I love doing this because it just makes it look a little bit more supported, I think, and it looks just a, a little bit nicer. Anyway, now all of this is spinning, you can see that our tank is beginning to fill it with water. And if we attach a steam engine to this, you will actually become a functioning steam boiler. So now for the main event, we want to dig down here uh, one block and get our water underneath, just like we did with the smaller boiler. Uh, I'm going to fill in all the edges with brick, just so... It looks a little bit nicer. You don't have to do this. You can leave this as dirt if you really want to. Um, you're probably never going to see down here, but I like to fill these things in just in case you do catch a glimpse down there. Okay, so once you've got your water in, we want to put the campfires underneath the tanks here. Now, the difference is, is that these tanks are going to be four blocks tall and one wide instead of being two blocks tall and one wide. So you want a total of four tanks per thing to make it a functioning boiler. And of course, we're going to just attach these onto the very top block like this. So obviously we have our heat and we have our output, but we don't have any water going into these things. And that's what this boiler here is for. So next step is to get all your water pumps in place. Uh, you can just place these along, shift them on each other, make sure they're all facing upwards. Of course, you can just place these in, however, and use a wrench to rotate them, but yeah. And then a layer of pipes over the top. Now, these pipes all connect to every boiler. And, you know, that's probably fine because they're all equidistant. It's all one block from pump to boiler. Um, but I don't really like having connected pipes like this. I would much rather have one pipe, one boiler. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to alternate going up one block here. And then we're going to grab our wrench and convert these to windowed pipes. Because these windowed pipes don't actually connect to anything. And by doing this, you can see we've now separated all of these boilers onto their own pipeline. And while I'm at it, you can actually see that these uh, pumps have placed the wrong way. The arrow is pointing downwards. So what we want to do is just grab our wrench and flip these upside down. You know, maybe you place these the right way, but just make sure these are pointing upwards instead of down. Um, and that's easy to tell because of this arrow. So obviously here again, we have the same problem as before in that we need to increase the speed of this output here to pump fast enough to get these boilers going. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a big cog here. And we're going to bust out these three blocks back here. Uh, I believe, yeah, they need to stay grass. So we're going to do that. And we're going to put one, two, three cogs. And you can see that's going to do some weird stuff with the pumps. They like to flip directions sometimes based on the flow of liquid. Or rotational speed, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, you can see this will be working because you'll see the water travel up through these pipes. 
And then again, over the top here, we can just run our shafts like this. And then this is where our main power output is going to come from. Now, just a little bit of dec decor before we carry on here and do the output is that what I like to do is I like to put Anzite casings on my cogs and stuff. So I'm going to put one on this guy here in the back, but then not on these two. I'm going to put it on the front here, here and here, and then one there. So all of that cog work in the back is nice and covered up. Um, the reason I'm not putting it on these two on the back is because we'll lose that edge texture of the andesite casing, which I don't really like this. You know, maybe you prefer this more, but I definitely prefer to just have the edge of the casing all the way around here like this. And just to get the power out of this building, what I like to do is I'm going to come out here, the gearbox across here, vertical gearbox, and then down into the ground. And, you know, what we can do from here on is we can just run this underground to wherever your projects you might want to go. And again, we can just throw an anti casing on this so that it's nice and clean. Um, but, yeah, you can then run this cable underground. Maybe you've got a little, little, little building over here that you can run it underground to. Nice and clean. You don't want to have any exposed shafts. And it will all be uh, nice and good. But, of course, we're not done quite just yet. We've still got to build the exterior of this building, give it a nice little house vibe or a little factory vibe kind of thing going on. So I'm going to go ahead, finish up the build, and then I'll bring you guys back in. I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and a comment. Tell me what other Create stuff you kind of want me to cover. I've got a kind of a big list that I've generated of a couple of different ideas of, like, resource farms, contraptions that I want to cover, power stuff, a whole load of stuff. So if you enjoyed it, Leave a like and a comment. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.